This is me. Used to be me. Now, this is me. <laughs> I have longer hair. I had longer hair than in the picture and a much longer beard, but now you get the idea. Um, I've decided to do some videos of my experience with the diagnosis of the rare cancer I've been handed down. So, uh, um, the reason why I wanted to do them um, is just because I kind of wish that that information was there for me, ready, readily available, because I'm the kind of guy that I've never seriously been to the doctor. Um, I haven't even had my blood drawn my whole life up until now, and I'm 45 years old. I know it seems a little unbelievable, but it's the truth. Um, I know the... I know the uh, content is out there um, to be had, but I wanted to do it anyways, um, just because I don't think there can be enough of it out there to help other people through every little individual experience that you experience when you go through something like this. Not just the cancer, but the the pokes and the prods and the tests and the, the chemo and this and that and all the treatments and everything that's been done to me in the past three months has just been outrageous so we'll go through it a little bit i'm going to catch everybody up to base right now it is uh, march 12th um yesterday i just got done with my fourth treatment of chemo and it was an 11 hour day um pretty hardcore um i was really tired when i got home and and uh, i'll leave that for now we'll catch back up on that a little bit later in the video but but uh Basically, to catch up to base, I got diagnosed. I got diagnosed um, on the 9th of March. Um, I had uh, I had symptoms before then, of course, um, that drew me to the eye doctor at first. Of course, I went to Kresge Institute in Detroit, and they were amazing people. Um, that was the beginning of figuring out what was going on with me. Um, I had double vision. Um, if I cover my left eye up, there's a haze right where I'm looking, so I can't see an eye chart or anything or or whatever was sitting in front of me. Um, so um, I was real honest with them about what was going on, even though you know I kind of knew what was there anyways, but I kind of felt like they had to know. So always be honest with them. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, then I got, uh, I got, um, advised to go to a few other doctors and I ended up with, with the main doctor, Dr. Sukar, and he's an amazing doctor. And, um, I had the biopsy done, um, because after this, the CT scans and the MRIs and, and whatever other test they gave me, they gave me a battery of blood test. They figured out that I had a mass in my sinus cavity behind my nose here. And um, so um, eventually there, they had to um, have the biopsy done. Um, and that occurred on the... 3rd of March, I believe. Um, so that was no big deal, um, I guess. It was a big deal when I first got there, um, poking and prodding me, things that I'd never had done to me before. Um, putting me out was a huge deal to me because I, I don't, I don't really sit, I don't think that sits well really with anybody. Um, However, I don't remember falling asleep and I don't remember waking up. So, you know, it was no big deal. Never knew what went on. I had a little bit of a bloody nose before because all I do is they, they scope up your nose, take a piece, bring it out, and that was it. So, um, they were, it was inconclusive um, as far as the biopsy goes, wherever they had it at that point. So, they had to send it to U of M to get that, that uh, more accurate diagnosis. And they came back with... Uh, LVLR, rhabdomysarcoma, which is a really rare form of cancer in the first place, and it only happens typically in kids. 
Um, I'm only aware of a few cases in adults, especially my age. Um, so it's even more rare, even at that point. And I've been passed around to doctors like a 15 year old hooker. Um, so they can all see it, um, which is a good thing because, because, uh, they got the A team of doctors working with me now um, because they all want to see it and they all want to be involved and, you know, it'll end up being a case study or whatever. Um, so that's a good thing. Um, going back to the, uh, the symptoms I had with my eyesight, I'm, I'm glad I had those symptoms because if I didn't have those symptoms, I'd never know it was there. And by the time they found it, they would be just telling me there's nothing they could do. Um, and I was also told 30 years ago, and I was 15 30 years ago, so this wasn't that long ago. Um, 30 years ago, when I was 15, this was a death sentence. So that was that was pretty tough, you know, to hear as well. Um, but things have come a long way since then, so that's good, you know. Um, so uh, biopsy, yeah, did the biopsy, then they, I went in and got to the doctor and got diagnosed um, and last thing I remember him saying when I was sitting in his office in the chair is, is cancer and that, that was it and then I I just got up asked him if I could leave I was crying I had asked him if I could leave he said yeah I just went right out the door and went home um, I had to call him the next day to ask him to find out what he said and what it was and a little bit more information because I couldn't handle it at that point obviously is a very um, you know, I mean, I guess the couple, two, three weeks followed was a very dark time and depressing time for me. Uh, probably the darkest in my life, I would say. Um, but, uh, that attitude is getting a lot better, um, now that I'm not so scared. Um, and then they gave me 70 to 80% chance to live through it. So that's good. Um, so yeah, that had me real scared. Um. I guess the next thing that happened was uh, um, getting the port put in for chemo. Um, I was a little freaked out about that. I'd heard some really bad stories about it, this and that, but uh, um, I've got something put in that they called, they call a, a smart port. It's a power injectable, power injectable port or something like that. So. Um, that that uh, was a very, really simple procedure. Um, I got an IV when I was there. They did a little bit of blood work. And um, they didn't even put me all the way out. And I sat there and talked to the doctor the whole time. He was doing the whole procedure. Um, I didn't feel a thing. The only thing I did feel was, was the three. They put uh, three um, numbing, local numbing shots in my, in my side of my chest here. And those were nothing more than like maybe a, maybe an intense bee sting and they were over real quick and I didn't feel a thing. You know, I didn't feel any pressure. I didn't feel anything at all. I mean, I don't know if you guys can see it. It's right there. It's still covered up, you know, from the treatment yesterday. Um, but, uh, it's, uh, pretty, pretty easy, uh, deal with it's just a you know if I can get the band-aid off here you know it's just uh you can I mean you can't even barely see it you know it's just a just a small bump there in my chest and that's it and they poke through the skin and go right down through there and they're into the port and I only got to get poked one time so that's good um but uh very easy procedure to get that put in. I was very shocked and it, to tell you the truth out of everything I've had done to me, all the scans and tests and, and pokes and prods and everything, that was, that was the easiest thing to deal with. And I was scared for no reason. Um, I don't know. I can't speak for other ports. I know there's different ones, but this one, the smart port, I, I do it again without question. It wouldn't be a big deal for me to do it again at all. Um, so that's, that's good there. Uh, um, let's see. After that, I went home, went home that day and I was out of there in about 30 minutes after, after the procedure was done. Um, 
no big deal. Uh, um, I had to, I was told that I should probably get the vaccination. Everybody knows how I feel about the vaccination. I think it sucks and I don't think anybody should ever touch it, but the situation that I'm in, I guess, calls for it a little bit, um, enough to where, to where I kind of felt like I had to get it done just to protect myself from that at least. Um, so, um, yep, yep. Vaccination card. So it looks like Pfizer, I guess. You know, and that happened on the 27th. And my second shot was on the, um, I don't know, the first it looks like. So, or something like that, I don't know. Doesn't really matter. But uh, that had to get done, unfortunately. Um, um, that was no big deal, really. I didn't have any symptoms from that, really. I mean, I had my arm hurt just a tad bit after each shot, and that was about it. So, um, but it did make me mad to have to do it. <laughs> so, um, the uh, let's see. Uh, then I I had to wait quite a while for my for my chemo treatments to start. I was getting a little bit. Uh, impatient with that but I stayed as patient as I could I just kept contacting them every day because there was some sort of insurance issue like there typically always is and they're approving this and improving that and whatever so that but that eventually got done started my my uh, chemo treatments and that was let's see I'm on my fourth one so you know the first one was three weeks ago um and uh, those are going really, really good. Um, we've got an awesome team of uh, infusion nurses that are, that are working with me. Um, they're awesome people. You know, I told them, I said, you're the only ones I want working with me. You know, because you get to know somebody and how they operate and how they how they do things. And you want to stick with that if you can. So um, they said that for the vast majority of, time, of the time, it'll be them. So um, Christine is the main one. Um, she's been awesome. You'll see her in later videos, I'm sure. Um, so I will be posting a few more videos, probably two or three more videos from yesterday during the treatment, so you can get a look at that. Um, but uh, my and the happy things about it, the tr chemo treatments are going good. My eyesight is actually returning back to normal um, already. Um, so the only thing I can gather from that is the tumor is the tumor is pushing on my optical nerve it is it has eroded the bone there and it's pushing on my optical nerve that's why i'm having eyesight problems um and i couldn't drive i couldn't i can't work you know stuff like that um but uh um it's pushing on the optical nerve so it's obviously shrinking it away from that optical nerve um and the reason they wanted to do chemo before surgery is because I, they were telling me it's a, a much worse surgery if you don't shrink it down off the optical nerve because then it becomes a lot more dangerous to that, that to my eye in general and my eyesight. So I, can, I know it's shrinking down because my eyesight's getting better. So that's like the number one thing I'm gaining out of this already and I've only had four treatments and, I've, and I have to go for another month and a half before they even reassess. So I think we're headed in the right direction there. Um, yeah, as far as the future goes, um, they'll, you know, like I said, they'll reassess in another month and a half, probably scan me some more, figure out how, how much it's shrunk down. Then I'll have to do, uh, um, yeah, then I'll have to go to op They want to do an operation and clean out all the, all the, uh, dead tissue or whatever that's left over from after the chemo, then they'll keep me on chemo, which I'm hoping is going to end up being the pill form instead of having to go back to the hospital once a week. And I'll have to do radiation, but the radiation, I'll have to be there to, at the hospital every day. Um, now, granted, it's only, it's only like a half an hour. I've got to be there every day. Um, and the, and the, uh, the side effects for radiation are very minimal. They said I'd probably just be tired, and that'd be about it. Um, but uh, they're going to use... Sorry about the long guys out there. <laughs> they're going to use... Uh, I can't remember if it's called proton or photon, because um, your normal radiation, they were telling me, it goes in, 
the body and goes right through the whole body and out the other side. Well, this, this other kind, it hits its target and stops. So there's less um, influence on surrounding tissue and seeing this so close to my eyes and brain and all that, I guess they probably are going to use that safer kind, which is probably better in the long run anyways. Um, so I'll have to do that and then hopefully uh, by my birthday I'm on the downhill side of this thing and uh, <coughs> and I won't be dealing with it for a whole lot longer I hope um, but uh, yeah things are going pretty good um, so far uh, so so uh, yeah um, I had the like I said I had that fourth treatment and uh, it's my only my only time I ever felt nauseous during the treatments was once for like 15 minutes and that was about two weeks ago and then it went away and never came back and after my 11 hour stay in the hospital with the treatments yesterday I felt I felt kind of nauseous throughout the night and afterwards um, but they do give me medication for um, nausea while I'm doing the treatments and I have pills just in case it starts getting worse I can take a pill for nausea and I can step that up through dosages. There's there's one to start with and two more that I can step it up with. So I did take one of those this morning just to kind of curb it off a little bit, but I'm feeling fine now. Um, um, yeah, I still have some of my mustache. My, my uh, eyebrows and eyelashes are still there. Um, my... <laughs> My beard was coming out in handfuls. You wouldn't believe it. Um, yeah, and the head hairs. I've still got hair up there, but a lot of it's gone. Um, I don't know if it still looks patchy around back or not, but I don't know if you can see that. But but uh, it was coming out enough to where I had to get rid of it. So um, I will see you guys in... A couple of more a couple two three more videos about yesterday's treatment and I'll keep coming out with updates so stick with it bye